In stark contrast to the freezing conditions and the rugged terrain of Iceland last year, the search for the 1993 World's Strongest Man and the winner of the Tonka Trophy brings us to Provence and the tiny city of Orange in southern France. It was here that a Celtic settlement first encountered the might of the Roman Empire in 105 BC, with the result it's left us with some of the most beautiful architecture in Europe. This majestic Arc de Triomphe sets the theme for our eight competitors to contest their trials of strength over the next two days under the watchful eye of Emperor Augustus in the majestic 7,000-seat amphitheatre. Our gladiators will compete in this arena, which has seen many great performances over 2,000 years, and what a lineup of strong men. Herod Badenhorst is the strongest man in Africa. He was fourth last year and is determined to challenge for the major honors. Harold Ironbear Collins is a full-blooded North American Indian with a body weight of over 300 pounds. In his first world contest, this makes him a formidable opponent. Manfred Herbel was born in the same town as his hero Arnold Schwarzenegger. His physique is awesome. He's got the biggest biceps in the world. Riku Kiri continues Finland's great tradition in World's Strongest Man. At 145 kilos, he's the heaviest man here. Magnus Ver Magnusson knows what it takes to win and lose. He was champion in 1991 and was just one point short of victory last year. Henrik Raven is the smallest man in the contest, but what he lacks in stature, he makes up with rugged determination and a tremendous will to win. Gary Taylor is one of the most experienced men here and one of the most talented. He breathes fire every time he competes and he's looking very fit indeed. Loren Venenberg's qualification for Orange was by far the most difficult. He had to beat the reigning world's strongest man, Ted van der Paarder, in the Dutch Championship. While well, this monument to ancient traditions now gets ready to witness some amazing feats of strength over the next two days. Eight tests in all, and the atmosphere is already tense as the contenders prepare themselves. Gary, you're taking a quiet moment before the first event. Yeah, just absorbing the atmosphere at the moment. The place is filling up. Uh, there's a lot of people from Holland who are really making a big noise, and it's nice. I think the place is ready. I'm ready. I can't do anything. just got to go now and hopefully do the best. It's your first World's Strongest Man. How does that make you feel? Feels good. A uh, little bit nervous. It feels, yeah, feels good. And I mean, you look around and it's yes, uncareable. How do you feel? First event? All right. Uh, I think it's just to go for it, you know. Give your best. Have you got some supporters in the crowd? No, none. I'm here by myself. Herod, first event, you're the first competitor. How does that make you feel? Nervous. <laughs> I don't know what to, you know, what to expect, but uh, maybe you know, some of the guys can, can learn out of my mistakes. But maybe some, some other I can draw later and, uh, and you know, learn through, through you know, uh, you know, their mistakes. Harold, there's great atmosphere out there. Are you nervous? Uh, no, not one bit. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, my adrenaline is just now starting. Tradition has it in World's Strongest Man that pulling trucks is a real test of power and endurance. In this first event, the juggernaut weighs seven tons, and every competitor must pull it over the course of 25 meters in the right. fastest possible time. This is Harriet Badenhorst. Take the strength! He has to start very low, and this year there's a rope to haul yourself along, so this really is a test of all-round strength and not just body weight. And there's even some barrels on the back of the lorry to make it heavier, as if seven tons wasn't enough. Herrick finished fifth in this event last year, and he's making progress. The front of the vehicle must cross the white line. 27.55 seconds, so the gauntlet is down in this year's contest, and already the crowd appreciating a good performance. OK, Harriet, first event, that was tough. No, it was. You know, I had a bad start. Of course, I don't know how to use the rope on the start. You know, normally I just work on my legs. But later I bullied up quite okay. Next to go, Manfred Herbel, and already he's becoming a favourite with the crowd. He's a great showman, but this is where it gets very serious indeed. Ready? Take the strain. Manfred is Austria's strongest man, and you can see why. I'm sure he's going to put those 26-inch arms to good use. Remember, 27.55 seconds is the target. Just look at the effort. He's very mobile for such a big man. It's fast. 24.6 seconds. It's better than the South Africans, and he continues to please the crowd. 
Manfred, that was a very fast time, but it took a lot out of you. Yes. Hope I'll recover fast enough. That's going to be a tough time to beat, though. Hope so. Hope so. And hope he may, because the next competitor is Beren Venenberg, six times a powerlifting champion of Holland. <laughs> He's really getting himself psyched up for his first appearance in World's Strongest Man, getting strapped in and locked on to seven tons of steel. The referee, Dr. Douglas Edmonds, sends him on his way. Venneberg has, of course, eliminated the reigning champion, so we know he's got some form. And I think he's wearing spikes. Now, that's interesting. The truck being pulled over a wooden reinforced floor, so the spikes giving him a little extra grip. Well, he's gone over Herbal's time, so I don't think he's going to do particularly well here today. 29.3 seconds. In fact, the slowest so far, but plenty of support for this new Dutch strongman. Next to go, Gary Taylor representing Wales, the 32-year-old PE instructor in the prison service. He really knows his way around these strength tests and will definitely want a better start than last year when he was well down the field after the first day. I don't think Gary Taylor was looking forward to this event. He's one of the lighter men, but he's going well now. The final sprint, and it's fast. It's very fast, 25.48, just eight-tenths slower than Manfred Herbel. I think he likes it. Gary, that just about puts you in second place at the moment, but you got off to a bad start. Not bad. Got it moving quite well. Yeah. Try to let go of the rope. A little bit too soon. The technique of using the rope still alien to some of the competitors. The first time it's ever been used. But if one man can get it right, it's Magnus Ver Magnussen, second equal with England's Jamie Reeves last year. Jamie, who's recovering from injury at the moment. He just gave a little nod there to signify he's ready, and it looks like a smooth start. The legs trying to drive hard, just like Linford Christie would do from a pair of starting blocks. Not so fast, of course, but just as impressive. Now those powerful arms pulling. I bet they're burning now. It's going to be close to Taylor's time, 25.87. Not quite, but good enough for third at the moment. The packed arena really getting involved in this competition now. So three men under 26 seconds so far. Manfred Herbel still in the lead. And this is a very high standard for Enrique Raven to try and match. Ready? Get the strength. Off he goes. He's having trouble getting started. He is the lightest man at only 125 kilos. That's 19 stones. That's still big, but it may not be big enough. He's got spikes as well, and the knees are heavily wrapped. Ravan keeps pulling on the rope. That harness really digging into the shoulders. Very close to the line now. 28.84, a respectable time, but outside the top four places, much to the relief of Gary Taylor and his coach, Mark Harris. It was very hard, wasn't it? Yeah, I was a little bit nervous, so my legs were shaking a bit. So I didn't, didn't get a good start. And uh, normally we don't use the rope, so... Just, it's the first time with the ropes, so I had to get used to that too also. Just two competitors left now in this event. The first, a real character, Harold Iron Bear Collins from Shannon in the USA, a full-blooded member of the Lumbee tribe. Doug Edmonds there in his national dress, sets Harold away wearing part of his. You can tell Iron Bear's origins from the chance of the crowd. He did say that he would get an extra feather in his full ceremonial headdress if he does well here. But I think he's a little too upright. He needs to get the body lower, as if he was in a rugby scrum. Well, it's definitely going to be slow. Over 30 seconds. 32.2 seconds, in fact. The slower so far, and the mix of power and endurance, I suspect, not to his liking. Harold, the first event, how do you feel after it? Uh, a little tired. Lungs burning. <laughs> time was just over 30 seconds. That's quite a low down at the minute, but lots of events to go. Yeah, uh, I'll make it up on the next one. <laughs> the final competitor now wearing the sort of shoes normally seen on the feet of Steve Backley, a pair of solid javelin boots, size 12, to support the giant frame of Riku Kiri from Finland. Huge hands Ready. with a tremendous grip. Ready. 
Riku is the heaviest man here, so this could be a good start. But the question is, will he be the new flying fin? Well, not at this rate. He's got very strong legs, but like Iron Bear, he can't use them unless he gets much, much lower. There's no doubting his upper body strength, but his technique is letting him down a little. 28.3 seconds. Not the start he wanted, but early days for Riku Kiri. The full result of the first event, a tremendous start for Austria and Manfred Herbel with Gary Taylor in second and Ver Magnussen doing what he does so often, a top three finish. Manfred, that was a fantastic start to the competition. Thank you very much. Um, took a lot of strain, so I hope I'll recover to the next event. Well, the Le Leviathan lift, have you ever tried that before? I've been practicing uh, with a normal incline bench press. My only problem is the lactic acid buildup, my huge muscles. This happens very fast, so I will have to complete the lift within 30 seconds. Manfred is absolutely right. His muscles are huge, and the Leviathan lift will test them to the full. Two lifters at a time. It's Herbal and Venneberg in round one. The both catches are lifted to your chest. At that point, clock starts. You get 60 seconds. Okay. Once again, the referee explaining the finer points of the rules. The maximum number of lifts from the chest to arm's length in 60 seconds. But I don't think anybody will last that long. Those logs weighing 110 kilos, that's 17 stones. And Venneberg just starts ahead of Herbal. Those bleeps you can hear are from the electronic gadgetry which checks the height the logs are lifted and counts them. And Venneberg beginning to slow now, but look at the rhythm and speed from Manfred. Those arms are gigantic and seem to be getting bigger by the second. And Venneberg is struggling now, but his rival has done exactly what he said he would, lift as fast as possible. 19 to 13, and both competitors look exhausted. I think these 26-inch arms might be pumped up a bit more now, are they? Yes, they are. <laughs> How big are they now? Too big. <laughs> both Magnuson and Gary Taylor know they have a real battle on. That total by Manfred is going to be very hard to beat. Magnussen striking up the rhythm. Gary on the far side is keeping pace. And both these men will be used to this movement through many hours pumping in the gym. Magnus just ahead at this stage. And Magnussen is in fact slowing and Gary Taylor is catching up. These last few reps are really going to hurt. And Gary needs three more now just to take the lead. Magnussen is just about finished. Taylor up to 18. Any more from Taylor? Not quite. Good score for Gary, though, and the crowd really warming to the tough Welshman and to our modern-day Viking. Magnus, which part of the body hurts most? Shoulders now. Uh, this is a new thing. Uh, I'm good in bench press and good in overhead lifts, but that's somewhere between. Uh, I've been training it in, in the gym and it doesn't fit me. I thought I'd do a lot more reps than that, but the angle is so acute, it's just purely nothing to do apart from press the shoulders. And once they've gone, they've gone. <laughs> I'd have butted it up as well at one stage, but that didn't help either. Well, if Iron Bear tries to head it up, he's going to spoil his band of feathers, but I reckon this is an event where he fancies his chances. Ulrike Raven in this heat accompanying Collins. And this event's similar to an incline bench press, but you can see the grip that Collins has here. Not like an ordinary weightlifting bar. Raven is on the left, Collins on the right. And Collins starting at a very steady rate. This may be a good tactic. Raven is just about keeping pace at the moment. But Iron Bear is already up to 10. He's going well, and he certainly does need the points. Remember, 19 is the target to beat. Well, he's very close to 19 already. Now, can he do one more? He's got it. Raven on 13, and total exhaustion again for both men. But Collins has set a very tough target to beat by the final pairing. Herrit Badenhorst looking deadly serious. He's lying fourth after the first event, just ahead of the man next to him on the stage now, Riku Kiri of Finland. Go, come on, go. 
The South African on the right-hand side. Both men are starting very well, and Kiri's trainers are giving us all a lesson in how to count in finish. And both of them are past 10 now. Badenhorst perhaps just tiring a little, but look at Kiri's total, it's going up and up. Now, can Badenhorst get 17? Not quite, I don't think. But look at Kiri's total, one more to equal Iron Bear's 20. Not quite, but the Finn and his team must be pleased with that effort. So maximum points for Harold Collins. A share of the spoils between Herbal and Kiri in joint second, with Gary Taylor picking up five for four. The victory, though, for the American, is first ever in World's Strongest Man. Well, you've only had two events, but I think we've drawn a bit of blood already, haven't yes. we? Yes, I done drawn some blood on, blood on my knuckles. That log is a little awkward, and when you're bringing it down, it's got a tension to move, hit you on your nose, and scratch your knuckles inside of the block. A little bruised he may be, but it has moved him off the bottom of the table. Manfred Herbal stretches his lead over Taylor, and Riku Kiri gives a great display, moving into third place. The giant Austrian is the man of the moment, but at what cost to his body? Manfred, you're leading after two events. Did you expect that? I was hoping for it, yes. I didn't expect it. Um, it's going better than I really expected it, yes. Now, you've just been telling me you've had your blood tested. Why was that? Um, I felt very exhausted after the first event. Uh, my muscles weren't 100% warm but up, and I think I put too much effort in the first pulling of the truck, and my lactic acid level shot up, and I, I went through the second event, and I'm better now, but um, still have to take it easy now. That could be a telling blow for Manford as we approach the third event. I'm sure none of the competitors will be thinking about taking it easy, especially Gary Taylor. He's prowling around the stage, the mental preparation just as important as the physical, and he prepares to tackle Samson's Barrow. Loaded up with 10 people, it weighs an incredible 1,000 kilos. That's very nearly a tonne, which they have to push over a 25-metre course as fast as possible. The clock will start as soon as the barrow is lifted and under control. And that's a very good start for Gary. He seems to have the technique sorted out very well indeed. And it certainly looks easy when all you have to do is go along for the ride. This is going to be a very fast time. 12.55 seconds. The crowd love it. I think Gary enjoyed that one, and the coach is happy too. The balance was just perfect. That weighs as much as a large car, and he made it look easy. Gary, it was a disadvantage having to go first, but it looked fantastic. Uh, one of my favourite events, it is a bloody heavy battle. You can just feel the grip start open towards the end. So you really got to go for it. It's a good, good ground. Might be some fast times there. Hopefully it's the fastest. You look pretty pleased with it at the end. New world record over 25 metres, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that has certainly given Magnus Ver Magnussen something to think about. He lost touch with the leaders in the last event, so he needs something special. A firm grip required. A strong back and good coordination. Well, just look at the effort. He must keep that barrow straight. He's about halfway down the course. It's a good time, but I don't think it's going to be as fast as the Welshman. He's just going to get over the line. 13.4 seconds, less than a second off Gary's time. Good performance. It almost looks like a sprinter's event. <laughs> Believe me, it's not easy. Rick Rava next. He has a good background in powerlifting. He's up and away. Oh, I think he may have hurt himself. Now he's holding his right knee. Let's see if we can have a look at that again. Something gave way. Yes, it was his knee, and I hope it's not too serious. The injury did not appear to be too bad, just a slight twist, but strictly speaking, the Dane should have been eliminated. But the judges have allowed him to have a second attempt. And this time he is making his way down the course successfully. So far, so good. Those small steps are sensible. If you try and stride too far, that will give you all sorts of problems. A good effort from Ravan. Mind you, he's going a bit too far to his left. He's just got it. 
24.10, the slower so far, but the crowd appreciating a brave effort. Now for the big iron bear, Harold Collins, feeling good, I should have thought, after winning the last event. Chalk all over the hands to get a little extra grip. Ooh, he's off to a pretty rocky start, and it's gone. Now that's a surprise, he can go again. There is 90 seconds in all to complete the course. Up and away again, but that barrow looks unstable. He'll have to go again, and he seems to be having problems with that left hand. Collins is finding this so difficult, and his confidence must be on the way out now. The clock getting very close to 30 seconds. And I think that will be enough. Back to the drawing board, and perhaps back to the bottom of the points table. Harold, what was the problem? Too much weight on one side. It was slipping out of my left hand. Was your hand giving you a problem because it was bleeding before the event? No, this the hand was bleeding. Uh, there's just too much weight on one side. It just kept slipping. There are certainly mixed fortunes in this event and perhaps Riku Kiri approaching it with a little apprehension. He's a very tall man and he seems to be leaning further forward than the others. He has the steps going in a good rhythm. He's really into his stride now. And that barrow is really gathering pace. I hope it's got some breaks. Doug Edmonds signals the finish, 15.6 seconds. That will move him into third place. Off comes the belt. What a good throw. Finnish television's gain is our loss, but roughly translated that means not too bad, but we shall have to wait and see mainly because Herod Badenhorst is the next competitor and this event could be ideal for this man. He's an ex-world record holder for the deadlift and a very fine rugby player, so that combination could take him to within reach of Gary Taylor. Already looking good. He's getting into long strides and he's really leaning into that barrow. Like Gary Taylor, he's accelerating all the way through very close to the finish now, 14.06, the third fastest so far, Badenhorst the strongman and the showman. I think you enjoyed that. If it comes to power and to grip and to pick up heavy stuff, I will be there. Yes. So the smile back on the Springbok's face as the current leader gets ready to see if his massive frame can push the barrow through the 12 second barrier. It went up easily enough. I do wonder though how much the previous events have taken out of Herbal. Oh, he's dropped it! Manford trying to get it off the runners as quickly as possible. And it all seems to be going wrong for the Austrian now. He's near the finish but he's all over the place. 16.48 seconds. So some concern about Herbal. He is being checked out again by the doctor and that could be a repeat of an injury he picked up on the Highland Games circuit. That means Herbal is down in fifth place as Venneberg prepares for this last run of Samson's Barrow. You can see just how important balance is. Massive strength, of course. Oh, I spoke too soon. Now, this looks as though it could be a bumpy ride for the passengers. And with the clock past 20 seconds, Gary Taylor will get his first win. Judging by the crowd reaction, I think you've got it in the bag. I won, it, yeah, I won this event, so but here we're on the way now. Well, Gary might well look pleased. Venneberg's finished 36.51. That won't impress the leaders. So Britain's strongest man takes maximum points. Magnus back in familiar territory with second place. And Baden Horse gets his highest finish so far in third. Manfred Herbel down in fifth will be concerned about his fitness now. That means that after three events, we have a new leader. Gary Taylor goes one and a half points ahead of the Austrian champion, and Magnussen moves back into third ahead of Riku Kiri. Just one event to go on the first day. That is an important lead for Taylor, as he and Venenberg get ready to contest the Clash of the Titans, a brand new event to this competition, and it will be a real test of strength and agility. Bodyweight too plays an important part, and Venenberg is the lighter man here. 
It's a form of wrestling. Both men lift the pole and use it to try and push the other man out of that square or off his feet. Oh, Gary wasting no time there. He's very powerful and the Dutchman didn't know what hit him. He's not about to give away his lead easily. Round one to Taylor and it's the best of three. Gary's Olympic weightlifting background helps here. Power and speed is what it's all about. I wonder what's going through his mind now. A first round loser only gets two and a half points, so this could be an early exit if Gary does it again. He leans into the pole and Venneberg is on his way. He's gone out. Taylor so aggressive. It hasn't taken him long at all to get to grips with this event. He goes through to the semi-final with ease. Gary, I think you've got the technique of this sorted out by now. <laughs> I've never done it before. We were, me and my coach were uh, talking about it. I don't have a great deal of body weight, so my plan of attack was fast in, drop, and just keep pushing, and it worked. So I've definitely got five points, so we're hanging in there good, pleased. These two men certainly have ample body weight. The two together could just about make up the front three in a rugby scrum. Magnuson versus Collins. Iron Bear is certainly the heavier by some 10 kilos, but I suspect Magnus is the most powerful. But Collins is certainly big. Both men pushing really hard, and Collins has slipped. Now, according to the rules, that means Magnus takes round one. Manfred looking for clarification. Yes, Doug Edmonds signifies it's Magnus, and I don't think the crowd like it. So straight back into the fray. This event based on an ancient Roman contest, so very fitting that it's being fought out in the amphitheatre. Oh, that's tough, he's down again, and Magnus is triumphant. Collins must be disappointed, but the Icelander victorious, and so reminiscent of his longtime rival, Jean-Paul Sigmundsson, who tragically died earlier this year. He would have approved of Magnus's win there. Now he fights Gary Taylor in the next round. Now then, what can Manfred Herbel do against Henrik Raven? Herbel's immense physique is proving very effective. Strong pushing from Herbel, and Raven is out. So, a very easy end to round one. Collins having a few bumps and scrapes repaired. Manfred now looking very relaxed. He won't want a long bout here. A short, sharp shock would do very nicely. He's twisting Ravan around, and he's out already. Very effective indeed. Thousands of hours in the gym have gone into developing those huge arms and shoulders. In fact, I think those arms are just about bigger than my legs. So Herbal strolls into the semi-final as the contestants get ready for the final bout. Herod Badenhorst lying in fifth place overall, up against the much taller Riku Kiri, who is one place ahead. They must start in the centre of the square. Badenhorst, with his rugby background, should like this one. Both men trying to stay on balance. I think the South African might be going. He's been twisted around, and I think he may be hurt. He seems to be holding his ribs. Well, Kiri was able to push down and along the pole. He starts to drive his opponent towards the rope. And Badenhorst beginning to give way, and now beginning to turn there. Now something must have given way. Herod holding his stomach, and he looks as though he is in pain, but he has come out for the second round. Kiri waiting patiently. Up comes the pole. Oh, something very definitely is wrong. And Kiri will win that one. But what is the damage to Bannonhorst? Not a satisfactory way to win. But as soon as Herrit picked up that pole, he was in trouble. And in fact, now the burly South African is being led away by the doctor. Perhaps a rib or back injury, but nothing too serious, we hope. Gary Taylor getting final instructions from his coach, and he prepares for the first semi-final. And he has got a formidable opponent, Magnus Ver Magnussen. It's late into the night now and the temperature is dropping, so these men will be feeling very stiff and sore as the first day of competition draws to a climax. Gary and Magnus, comparable in weight and stature. I wonder if Taylor has still got some of that explosive power left in the engine room. 
He certainly has. Magnus is only going to last a couple of seconds. Now, is that a look of anguish? He's holding his right bicep. Let's have a look at the replay. You can see there's a lot of pressure there on that right arm, and that's a muscle which has given him trouble in the past. He's ready to go for round two. Can Magnussen last any longer? The answer is no. Good points for Gary, and he becomes the first man in the final. And a little wry smile from Magnus, who met more than his match in this new event. It's dangerous. You're in a very vulnerable position. You're going to use one arm because the ropes are so far apart. And I've got to pull my bicep now. Are you going out into the final? I've got to go out, but I'm not going to put much into it. I've got seven points, more than I thought I'd get, so I'm over the bloody moon, believe it. Manford now versus Riku, and I don't think they will know the extent of Gary's injury. Two very big men, both six feet four inches tall. Riku is really leaning into this pole. This seems to be his tactic. You must push in a straight line if possible. Now, Herbal, is he going to be the first to give way? It looks as though he's heading for the edge. It's going to be very close, but I think he goes out. And Kiri's coach, Marku, still trying to motivate his man. Just a little nod of approval from Riku. And how much has Herbal got left? Seems to be the Finn who's got the spring in his step. Manfred Herbal really has to go for this one now. Just look how low he's getting. Well, this is the best competition yet, but Herbal goes down. That's a shame, just when it looked as though he might pull one back. Kiri wins and joins Taylor in the final, and Manfred will fight Magnus for third place. Well, this particular event is really taking its toll, and just look at this, Riku Kiri now with an ankle problem. Manfred as well, with that troubled finger, strapped and looking fatigued. I don't think he's going to go out for the loser's final. And in fact, he doesn't. That means Magnus gets six valuable points and a good first day for the 1991 champion. But drama in the finish camp, Kiri may not make the final at all. It's a final. Taylor and Kiri. Does Riku have a problem? He, no. yeah, he, must go. Okay. he hurt so his legs and he, he can't fight. Taylor gets the point. He concedes. Taylor wins. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. Taylor, he won't get Zalek Akkonen. And that means Gary Taylor wins by default in an event which has produced a few more walking wounded. Kiri and Magnussen take second and third with a very tired Herbal in fourth place. Ever since the truck pull which Manfred won and then the Leviathan lift where he took equal second place, he's been monitored constantly by the team doctors and they've been showing some concern. Uh, yes, I think he suffers from his sheer size. Um, he's got a lot of muscle as you can see and uh, he produces a lot of lactic acid. And so after a, a, an event where he's been working anaerobically for a long time, that's without oxygen, uh, his muscles produce a lot of lactic acid and his blood gets very acid. And that's obviously not a very uh, good position to be in. Uh, you build up uh, what is called an oxygen debt, where you have to repay a lot of oxygen to burn the lactic acid up. And, um, and so it takes him quite a, uh, you know, quite a few minutes to recover from that. So Manfred down, but not out, I'm sure. And the end of the first day makes interesting reading. Gary Taylor has not been out of the top four in any of the events. He's built up a big lead already. Manfred is in second place by just one point, but can he recover to mount a challenge tomorrow? It's Taylor, though, who is the man of the moment. Gary, five points ahead at the end of day one. You couldn't have dreamt of that three hours ago. Well, um, I must admit, I was looking, uh, looking at the competition. I thought, in order to do well over the whole day, 25 points on the first day would have been good. I'm not sure what I've got. I think it's 27, is it? No, 28. Uh, so I'm three points up on what I thought I'd get. So I'm buzzing. Don't worry about that. <laughs> He certainly was, and that was in stark contrast to the tranquil surroundings of Orange the following morning. The pace of life was slow, the ambience totally relaxed and full of character. Our competitors, though, were a little weary after their exploits the day before, and for one of them, there was bad news. Well, I start off me and uh, uh, Rico Kiri, and uh, when I press, you know, towards him, um, I felt like a pain in my, my hip. You know, round about my spy, yeah, and uh, I just couldn't go on. It was like a pain that went through me. 
Is there a problem with you competing in the world's strongest man now? Well, the doctor told me not to, not to take part. He said that uh, he will advise not to take part because I can hurt myself further and then I can't take part in, you know, in any competition or shows, whatever. Four events to go in World's Strongest Man now, and the centerpiece for this very first event, one of the icons of French design over many years, the 2CV. Well, car lifting has been a tradition in this competition for many years, but not only do the competitors have to lift the car this time, they lift these enormous straps onto their shoulders and then have to carry it down the course of 25 metres in the fastest possible time. It's not just a question of strength, it's speed, coordination and very delicate balance. This event could be one of the most difficult in this year's competition. Eric Badenhorst will be very disappointed to miss this second day, but he is sensible not to risk further injury. So Magnus, the first to attempt the car carry. He's approaching it with caution, and that's because it weighs 440 kilos. That's close to 1,000 pounds, and the engine is still in there, so it will be heavier at the front. Some last-minute adjustment to the straps for Magnus. He's lying in fourth place after the first day, six points behind Gary Taylor. The actual lifting of the car I don't think will be a problem, such as the strength of these men, but the balance is a different matter altogether. Ready. Lift. Lift. Up it goes. And the crowd already appreciating this feat of strength. 25 metres seems an awful long way off. And those wheels must stay clear of the ground. The referee will give one warning only. Magnuson looking good. This is a tremendous effort. It's beginning to sway just a little bit now. Down it goes. A good effort, and that's the target for everyone else to beat. It's very difficult. Especially the car wobbles a lot, and it got me off balance in the end. But you did get off to a good start, and that could be a very good distance. Well, like I said, it's a marker for everybody else, isn't it? Now, can Ravan learn from Magnus's experience? It's just wobbling a little, but he's on his way. The pressure on the shoulders must be incredible. Magnus's mark is about 20 metres away, so he's got a long way to go yet. But those short steps are sensible, and that's enough. The referee will come round and mark the spot. And Riku Kiri getting the now familiar psyching up job from his coach as Ravan recovers. You'd have to take small steps and suddenly the legs start burning and then they burn like hell. And then suddenly the car wants to go forward and I want to get the same speed. But the car was faster than me last, so you just have to follow the car until it hit the ground. And then it was over. Well, I don't think anyone will get any speeding tickets here, but Riku could do well as long as his ankle is fully recovered. If it's not, this could be a very painful experience indeed. In fact, both ankles look heavily strapped. Those massive shoulders taking the strain of over 2,000 pounds. He's just going to pass Ravan's marker. That's enough, he says. Magnus still in the lead, but the Finn survives. I think you're happy with that. Yeah, because uh, I'm afraid that uh, he can't carry that car, but uh, no, it's over. He has the strength, but his ankle is the problem right now. Yeah, because it's broken. And uh, there is a lot of pain, but uh, he's a very tough guy. <laughs> Thank you. His ankle is, in fact, very badly strained, but the coach and Ilkan and Misto are still concerned. And Venneberg's effort didn't really get off the starting line. His most difficult job is taking off this very thick leotard, which supports the body. Next on the starting grid, Manfred Herbel, looking refreshed now. You could hear the straps virtually groaning under the pressure there. The marshal on the left just steadying the car before it crossed the line. That's allowed, that's all right. Slow but steady for Manfred, already passing Harold Collins' marker. Now the car beginning to swing a little now. He's just trying to check the balance. I just wonder if he can get going again. Well, that's the answer. It's about 10 metres, and Magnus wondering if anybody can beat his distance. 
Well, if anyone can, it must be Gary Taylor. The last man to go. He's been in great form and now looking for a third consecutive win. Magnussen's still looking for his first victory, but who would bet against the Welshman? He's getting closer, and that picture tells it all. He can't wait to get out of the car. Magnus is beaten. Second place, are you satisfied with that? Yeah, actually, yeah. I thought I would be even less, just because of going first. The rest overnight suited Gary Taylor. Win number three, ahead of his great rival over the years, Ver Magnussen. Riku Kiri takes third place for the third time, and of course, Vandenhorst has retired. Gary, you just got the start you wanted. That was perfect. Uh, another win. Tough event. It's easier when you go last. You've got markers to look for. I just kept the car balanced and kept going. I think in terms of the competitors behind you as well, it was a perfect result, wasn't it? Brilliant. Brilliant. We're still keeping it. Britain, we go in again. It certainly does look like Britain and Wales have set a tough score to beat. Taylor stretching his lead over Magnus to seven points. The big change, though, is Manfred Herbel, second after the first day, drops two places. Event six takes its theme from the amphitheatre's heritage. It's called the Hercules Hold. Legend has it that mythological strongmen held two teams of horses with outstretched arms. Well, horses may be too hot to handle, so Henri Graven gets ready to hold two enormous casks of the local vintage, Chateau Neuf du Pape. The forklift truck's just moving out of the way as the clock starts. They support the barrels until the referee gives the signal to start. And those barrels weigh as much as a small car engine, around 300 pounds each. Tremendous grip required. They're gone, 38.42 seconds, and Collins looking a little apprehensive. Riku Kiri next, like Herbal. He has a massive chest and arms. Once again, the referee just explaining the finer points of the rules. It doesn't look very dramatic, like some of the other events, but there is a lot of force going through those shoulders, arms and the hands. Close to 600 pounds in all. He looks very relaxed. Already he's gone well past Ravan's time. He's trying to shut out the pain and just hang on for a few vital seconds. This is a great effort by Kiri. He must be coming to the end soon. He's going to go over the one-minute barrier. Oh, that's marvellous. 63.6 seconds. I think that's going to add to his confidence now, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's enough. You Thank think that will win it? I think so. Thank you. Nobody achieved anything like that time in practice, and that has given Venneberg a huge target to go for now. The forklift retire. He looks comfortable, doesn't he? But it must be hurting. This has got to be a very difficult event to train for. There are no weightlifting events which simulate this position that he's in now. He's getting very close to Ravin's time. He's passed it now. How much longer can he hold? It's a good effort. 45.69, and that time takes him into second place behind Kiri. Manfred Herbel's problems continue. It's the finger he damaged yesterday, and his time of 34.77 is not going to worry the leaders. Now Gary Taylor, the overall leader. Plenty of chalk on the hands for extra grip. Now that's interesting, he's obviously thought about the technique, preferring to bend over slightly so the pull is more across the back than the chest. Totally still, and total concentration. Taylor's had a marvellous two days, and surely now he must be a serious contender for the title. Just over the half minute mark, one of the officials shouting out the times. 38.48 seconds, just six one-hundredths ahead of Ravan, and it takes him into third place. The final competitor now, Magnus gets ready to attempt to beat that incredible time set by the Finn. Nobody is within 17 seconds of it so far. So in Riku Kiri, we know we have somebody who can push Taylor all the way. And this man too, 
He's lying in second place overall at the moment. So a good result ahead of Taylor would push him hard with just two events to go. He's listening out for the time. He knows the time he's got to beat. He's over 30 seconds. The strain beginning to show. This is a good time by Magnussen. He's gone ahead of Taylor. 45.8 seconds, second place. Gary Taylor has now been in fourth place twice in two days, but that was Manfred Herbel's worst result. Riku Kiri beginning to make a charge at just the right time ahead of Magnussen, and Venneberg has his best result so far. Taylor's lead is cut to four and a half points. Kiri moves ahead of Magnussen for the first time in World's Strongest Man, just half a point ahead, and Manfred seems to be losing touch with the leaders, but it's still Gary Taylor the rest have to beat. Two events to go. I'm still going to ask you, are you making any predictions? Two good events for me now, so... Um, yes, World's Strongest Man, hopefully, in the next hour. <laughs> we'll see. The seventh test has its roots in the Scottish Highland Games, but because of the setting and the theme of this year's competition, it's called the Trojan War. Competitors oh. relaxing before the onslaught, and they have to scale the wall not by climbing it, but by throwing a concrete block over the top, which is currently at five metres. That block weighs 20 kilos, that's 44 pounds. And this is Riku Kiri. Well, that's a very good demonstration on how it should be done. Harold Collins already eliminated and not a very happy man. Well, the wall is still at five metres, the height which Iron Bear failed. And this is Manfred's first attempt. My goodness, that's sailed over. Venneberg has also failed at this height and Raven is out too. But the next attempt is going to be a crucial one by Gary Taylor. Each man is allowed two tries at each height and Taylor failed his first, so he must get this to stay in the competition. Up it goes, and he's missed it. It had the height, but it didn't travel back far enough, and that's a surprise because Gary came second in a similar event last year. He couldn't get it right here, and that's put him under a little pressure now. He's watching Magnus take his second attempt and a good opportunity for the Icelander to claw back at least one point. Now then, big long pull with the arms. And he's got it. It's scraped over. This could make a, a big difference big, to the overall score. Yeah, big difference. Just want to see how these get now on you. <laughs> Hang on. Are we going to need results or anything? What's the points at the moment? Well, Gary's mood is changing just a little now as we draw closer to the climax of the event. The wall has moved up now to 5 metres 15, just three men left in the competition. And this is Riku's second attempt. Well, that looked very easy indeed. Explosive power is needed here. And he's gaining in confidence with each throw. Magnus is still there, but he's had one failure. Manfred's turn now. His first attempt, in fact... So if successful, he would take a tactical advantage, rather like in a high jump competition. And it's over. In fact, it would be more like a pole vault competition with the sort of heights we're seeing now. He's still in there fighting, and so is Magnus. This is Magnuson's second and last attempt. He can't finish any worse than third, but with the pressure of this last attempt and maybe a little extra rush of adrenaline, he can stay in and go on to the next height. And that gives you a good idea of how high the wall is, nearly 17 feet. Arms, legs and back in action, and it was so close. So Magnus is out and he will finish in third place. Both Riku here and Manfred have gone onwards and upwards. The wall is now at 5 metres 60, that's 18 feet plus. And he is the first man to attempt it. Up it goes. Oh, not quite. And he needs a swift pair of heels to avoid the block on its way down. Herbal now wanting support from the crowd. Kiri stalking around in the foreground, and it's gone over. So the pressure is back on the fin. The can-back system of failures will be used in working out the final result, so the Austrian has the advantage now. Kiri looking for a fast pull with those long arms. If he fails, Manfred has won. He's got it! There's a real battle on now, but Herbal has one less failure overall. 
concentration from Herbal. But the height has now been increased to 5 metres 75, and Riku has already failed once. So again, it's all down to him to stay in the competition, and that one was nowhere near it. So Herbal will come out for his final attempt. He knows he has won. And this is the first event he's won since the truck pull on day one. Riku takes seven points. The failure doesn't matter at all. So the man with a physique like a Roman god wins this one, but he was pushed all the way by Riku Kiri. Magnus was up there too, and Gary Taylor must be just a little nervous now as he has his second consecutive finish outside the top three. So the lead is cut once again, just two and a half points coming into the final event. The top four positions all stay the same, with Kiri and Magnussen still locked together, and Manfred Herbel reflecting on mixed fortunes as he gets ready for the finale. Manfred preparing for the last event already, but that previous event, it brought a big smile to your face, I think. Well, considering I wasn't so well yesterday, brought some spirit back into my body. <laughs> That's OK. Have you had a good two days of competition? Well, first two events was good and the last one was good too. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the others. Um, no, in general, I'm, I'm OK, yeah. It's not just Manfred's body that's taken a beating over the last two days, is it? Um, no, it's, uh, his metabolism has been a problem over the last couple of days, uh, but it, mainly his carbohydrates, his sugars. Um, but we are working very hard on him today, and uh, we seem to have got it right, and uh, he's survived the event. Magnus, a three-and-a-half point difference. It seems an impossible task. Uh, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, well, anyway, I'm going to do, do my best in the last one. Gary, you're still in the lead, one event to go, but the gap has been narrowed now to two and a half points, and that really sets it up for the very final event, doesn't it? I thought it would be a close competition. I didn't think it would be this close. Um, I'm still hanging on in there, but um, we've got a tough event now. I've just got to win this one, to make no doubt about it. Gary is right in saying it's a tough event. The eighth test is one that Doug Edmonds and his team knew would provide a thrilling climax. It's called the Atlas Stones. The stage set for two competitors in each heat, and they have to lift five enormous granite stones on top of the barrels in the quickest time. Vandenberg is actually competing against one of the reserves because Badenhorst is out. Those stones increase in weight as you reach number five, and that one weighs an incredible 300 pounds. Well, the reserve is actually going very well indeed, but remember, Vandenberg has had two hard days of competition. The final one now. Can he get it on top of the barrel? Only just 24.19. Venneberg has done well. Enrique Raven up against Harold Collins on the right-hand side. Both men Ten wanting position. to finish in style. Ready. Here goes Raven on the left. He nearly crashed that one on top. Collins is going, and Raven mistimed it there. Despite that, he's just ahead of Iron Bear, but that's another slip. Now Collins looks as though he's going to go back into the lead. Three, three. What can Harold now do as he leads up to the 135 kilo stone? Here he goes with a big one. Ravens on the last one as well. Well done to Harold Collins, 30.73. Raven just struggling a little bit. 38 seconds dead. Those stones familiar to Magnus and Manfred in this heat. They've used them a lot in the Highland Games competitions where they're actually called the McGlashan stones. I think we might see some fast times here. Riku watching and perhaps learning. Oh, this is fast. They're neck and neck. Magnus just going ahead a little bit of herbal. It's going to be a cracking time. Oh, Magnus nearly threw that one on. 17.87, fantastic. Manfred with this last one just outside Venenberg's time, 28.55. Magnus, you said you were going to set a very fast time. You've done exactly that. Yeah, but uh, Gary is also very fast at stones. And I think Rico will be also. I'll see. I hope it's enough. I don't know if Riku has experience in this event, but Taylor certainly has. 
And if he's going to take the overall title, he must beat Herbal's time of 28.56 to make sure. Well, this is a very fast start by both men. Coming into the second barrel now, no problems, but Riku has knocked it over. Taylor really going very well indeed. This is great stuff. He's on the last one now. Up it goes, he's done it. The fastest time of anybody. Riku is still there, but he knows he has lost. 27 seconds dead, fourth place for Kiri. But just look at Taylor. Congratulations all round at the end of two marvellous days. Hang on, I'll you first. Gay, world's strongest man for 1993. That was fantastic. Oh, I was so nervous that uh, closer than I thought it would be the end, but oh, my one of my favourite events. Brilliant, really pleased. Well, everybody says the sign of a true champion is to do it when it counts, and you did exactly that. Well, I was a bit upset with the throw in the block. That's usually a good one for me as well, but it can't be good all the time, but it's finished up good, and oh, am I pleased now. Yes. <laughs> Magnus, the end of another world's strongest man. Second last year, second this year. It was very, very close in the uh, end. Uh, that's how it should be. It should come down to the final event, like it did. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with it. Like I said, I'm, uh, I have been in better shape. So I'm really pleased with it. Not half as pleased as Gary Taylor, I'll bet. Britain provides the champion for only the fourth time in 16 years of competition. He follows in the footsteps of Jeff Capes and Jamie Reeves. Magnus clawed his way back into second place by just half a point. And as we await the presentation, in third place, we've seen a possible champion of the future. Riku Kiri! Riku Kiri, just one individual victory in two days, but so consistent. Magnus, champion in 1991, and now second two years in a row. Gary and the final act for the delighted Welshman. The presentation to a very appreciative crowd. And Gary now with the Mayor of Orange, Alan Labay, who has promised the champion his weight in Chateau Neuf du Pape. That's an awful lot of wine. The presentation of the trophy by Eleanor Barnes, senior product manager on behalf of Tonka. Gary Taylor is the world's strongest man for 1993. strongest man go from here what do you do next well I gotta go on my phone my mommy see you know <laughs> <laughs>